I got six o'clock now, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. This uh, of the Deerford, Deerfield Select Board Board of Health tonight at 6 p.m. on April 7th, 2021, and, and we're going remote, and I will have Trevor read that horrendous oh. passcode stuff. No problem. I should be able to do it in my <laughs> sleep by now, but um, so <laughs> meetings normally held at the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield Mass are being held, held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Remote meeting connections are noted on our agenda. So if you go to our town website down in the bottom right by the calendar, you'll see a link to this meeting tonight. If you click on that link, you'll become uh, see a link for our agenda. Click on the agenda and you'll see a link to this Zoom meeting that you happen to be on. If you're watching at home on FCAT, you can dial in to make comments. The phone number, there's several phone numbers listed there, but one of them is 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Um, you can just hit pound after that, you'll get right in. But if you need the passcode, it's 570012. And if you're um, on the landline, just hit star six to mute your phones. And even if you're on the meeting, you can, you can mute except for the select board until asking a question and um and wait to speak until others are, have spoken so welcome thank you everyone um we have a hearing at 6 15 for berkshire brewing um so we have a few minutes and i think we'll get um skip right down to select board re um announcements is there anything trevor or dave that you wanted to announce well i could talk for a long time about the sewer um but i'll I, I don't have it on the agenda and I know we're going to discuss that coming up, uh, I think next week. So okay. bids came back. We have a workaround. We're trying to figure out how to, how to be able to afford our, our sewer project. So I can fill everybody in on that a little later on. Um, okay. so other than that, no. All right. Dave, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, there's a rumor going around that I'm not going to run again for selectman. That's not true. I am oh. going to run. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, great. It'll be oh. good to have you next year. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs a thorn, and I figure I could be it. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, we've enjoyed working with you, so I hope you can continue. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I think the big thing that I want to just address is um, this is so super exciting. We have one of the highest vaccination rates um, in any community in uh, the Commonwealth so far. We're 48.2% vaccinated. Thank and you, Deerfield. 2,559 2, people vaccinated so far. And it, is, and it isn't even open to everyone yet. So this is so exciting. Um, it's actually stunning, I think. And I have to say, um, it's really due to the wonderful, wonderful teamwork. We had Jen Bartek from the police department coordinating Rissa, Marissa Smith from the police department. Um, I know Lori Lankowski um, McComb, who was our emergency just, um, manager was there a few times. Jennifer Yankowski in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. is going online. Um, you know, if there's Phyllis Nardowitz, Diane Tennis, um, you know, Triad, Sharon Pachorik and Nancy Pachorik working with Triad, the senior center, everybody's been chipping away. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like the uh, amount of vaccine we're coming to us as local public health persons are, is going to be pretty flat for the next yeah. two or three weeks. So, um, but CVS, which gets, and Walgreens, which gets theirs direct from the federal government is doubling and tripling and 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 every week so keep looking at the cvs sites um yep. and and try to get through there and if you really are having problems call our office jen um uh Gannett in our office is keeping a list of people that really need help um and, and if they're really frustrated and we'll try to connect you with this wonderful wonderful team of people and i I just have to say, you know, our police are truly being protective and keeping us safe and just mm -hmm. doing this out of the goodness of the heart, coming in 
off duty in the middle of their shift when they're in the patrolling they come in and check and see if there's any opening somewhere i mean it's just fabulous and they've been getting going through our list of our seniors that have not been able to sign up and or have computer access and and we've been getting our homebound lisa mm-hmm. has been doing our homebound on a yep. consistent basis so we have about 30 homebound and we're we're going right through them so it's so Make exciting it, good um, so I'm, I'm very, very pleased. And I, I think that's good news. Um, we do have a later on, uh, we'll be talking I, about the spring sports. Can I interject a little bit though? Um, yeah. these, this is all great news. And yet every day, constantly, I'm getting notifications about cases in Deerfield. So yes, it's great that we're, we're doing a good job and we're vaccinating, but um, there, there is a spike happening right now. Um, and people need to be careful. They need to wear their mask, even if you're vaccinated, because you can carry, you can still get, you know, you get your vaccination, you can still get COVID and you can still pass it on. So please um, wear your mask, socially distance, do all the things. I mean, obviously you don't, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to worry about winding up on a ventilator, most likely, but, yeah. um, but it's just passing it to others. And there, there's definitely, you know, I'm seeing that Oil. The emails coming through constantly about about cases, so yeah. we cannot let our guard down when we're this close. So please, yeah. please, please keep doing that. I um, the variants are so um, common now that the state isn't even notifying us about them, so it's very, very serious. And yeah. and and I think this the spike is definitely from the variants. So please, yeah. people have to be serious about this. And um, but the vaccine does work, mm-hmm. so. Um, we can just keep encouraging people to get the vaccine as much as possible. Um, the plan going forward is that once vaccine is, is really readily available and it's open to everybody, when we get to phase three, which is after April 19th, we will be um, running a couple giant drive throughs so everybody and his brother can come and we will um, hopefully be able to offer vaccine. And then um, we'll break out into some smaller clinics like we did in the H1N1 back in 2009 and 10. That was very effective in reaching people that were not able to come, you know, on the weekends, a couple weekends that we had it. So um, we vaccine will be available for everyone fairly soon. So um, thank you. Um, we have a couple minutes here mm-hmm. still. Um, we can't just really start at 6.15. So the first item on the agenda um, is mosquito, mosquito control district opt-out. This, um, I'm, a, you know, this mosquito commissioner and uh, I go to the state meetings and it's not really clear what the governor was intending on this. So we formed a mosquito district, number one, to clean up some of the stagnant water in town, but also because of climate change, we have much more diseased mosquitoes and stuff like that. So, but I'm totally against spraying. Everybody in the valley's totally against spraying. I would say every town, there are 18 towns that belong to the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District, and we are all against spraying. But I think it's not good. we, We have another meeting on Monday. Um, the district does with uh, Department of Agriculture lawyers. So we will put together some kind of statement. But um, I think it's not good at this point that we opt out. We have till May 15th to make a decision. But I, at this point, I'm recommending not to opt out because if there is a true emergency, um, as a member of the Mosquito District, Deerfield can ask for our mutual aid. But there's only one district in the state that has an airplane to spray and that's bristol county and and under mutual aid they like go to barnstable but it's you know it's several hundred dollars an hour yeah so why would we want to pay for that so if the governor declares an emergency he's going to do what he wants to do just like the vaccine rollout he's going to do what he Mm -hmm. wants to do and then he's then he'll have why would we want to pay for that so if he declares yeah let the state pay and then we would have good argument not to participate um we'd have good argument not to participate because um we have lava siding plans and we monitor what you know we trap and we monitor we number the number of mosquitoes we have the, there's only three or four species that we have that carry diseases that we have to worry about. 
out of the 52. The 52. Yep, yep. We, of the ones that we need to know, worry about, we have, we would know what's going on. We monitor everything. So we would have, I think, a very good argument to opt out without having to actually pay if, if we have to. So I think at this point, we'll just say, don't do anything. We're right. not going to opt out, but I will formally, we'll try to have some kind of a formal statement from the, uh, that will lawyers will prepare from the Mosquito District. I tend to agree with that because I think, um, I mean, our whole goal and all of our work has always been lava siding and being proactive on this situation so we don't get into the spot that you have to spray. But should you have to spray because we've done everything and there's some something catastrophic has happened, it'd be nice to not have to pay that bill. Um, and I think we could probably work pretty hard to, uh, to make sure that we're not in the boat of having to um, you know, have to, have to spray ever because we're, you know, very proactive and we put the, the lava side in the ditches everywhere and we work with all kinds of property owners to probably, you know, trying to reduce that risk, especially as it starts to get warm now. So yeah, luckily use, it's been dry. Well, yeah. we've been using, we use BTI, which is safe. And um, we're really stressing that people try to um, attract dragonflies, which is, vero they voraciously eat larvae as well as adult mosquitoes and um, much like seven times the amount of bats. So, mm -hmm. you know, people really would want to encourage dragonflies and stuff like that. So anyway, okay. Um, I no, have, no, no. oh God, we have five more minutes. All right. Cancellation of the Memorial Day Parade. We can get on with that. Um, Heartbreaking, but necessary. I was just gonna say, we're really not at a place where we can, um, uh, hold crowds like that. So I think we're going to cancel another year that's been re recommended by the Memorial Day Parade Committee. Yeah. So, um, I don't John, know if anyone has, has a comment well, or anything. John, you know, I've been talking with John since he had, he always organizes it and does an amazing job working with the VFW and um, veterans in town to commemorate, you know, our veterans. And I think, um, I so look forward to this event every year and it's, it's been heartbreaking to have to not do it uh, last year and now again this year, but we just think it's too soon um, as much as we, we only have 50% vaccinated. So I think um, be it, it's coming up too quick to try and get it all. It's a lot of planning that goes into this. So it just seems like too close to try and do that. But every year uh, and last year, they um, FCAT did go around and videoed it and then put it up on local access television. So you can watch um, uh, some ceremonies at, at the um, cemeteries and, and all. So um, I just think it is the smart thing to do as well. I agree with John and I'm, I'm glad he requested that. And we really look forward to next year to be able to, um, to participate again. Um, I just have one other announcement before we move on to the public hearing. Um, the tick testing site at UMass has been, the lab has been closed down because of um, COVID financial stuff. So um, I've, we've been in constant con uh, contact with Dr. Rich who ran that um, lab in the um, at UMass and he is setting up a private nonprofit lab that himself because he feels so um, invested in how important this is and he doesn't want to interrupt the data that we've been collecting over the years on our ticks. So um, that is going to be up and running on April 15th. The okay. finance committee um, approved the board of health budget last night, which includes, um, you know, the subsidized testing for ticks. And we just have to figure out the billing. Um, I got to sit down with Brenda our accountant and mm -hmm. figure out how we're going to work this out, but it, it shouldn't be any real different than what it is. So after, if you, if you've gotten bitten, I've already had four people that have gotten bitten and they wanted their ticks tested. And that's how I found out that actually the lab was shut down. So um, hold on to your ticks. You, it doesn't matter if they die. Um, the DNA is still there. So if it's, if you're peace of mind to have it, but it's also valid really valuable information for us because it, we um, trend what the disease load is on our ticks. Um, consistently, 
over the years, for all the years that we've been doing it, we have about a third of our ticks are in, um, infected with Lyme disease. It goes from 32-ish to 37-ish, mm -hmm. but it floats in between. So about roughly a third of our ticks have Lyme disease. Oops. But the terrible trend that has started, which was very, from almost zero, Tower we're almost up to 10% of our ticks have these other bacterial, secondary bacterial infections, and they're, and they're just as bad or worse than um, Lyme disease. And so we really, it's important for you as a peace of mind to know whether you should have antibiotics or not. And, you know, talk to your primary care doctor, you, you know, to have the test to say that this was in fact an infected tick, but also it's just so helpful for us to have this long-term information that we can trend with. And again, it's more, more ticks because of climate change, more disease ticks. So, um, you know, we're doing everything we can to be preventive, um, you know, try to try to do as, as much as you can to be doing tick checks at, every time you go outside, that kind of thing. Okay. Oh, I think, uh, just real quickly oh. before we get into that, can we take a vote on canceling the parade? Um, oh, okay. To take that vote. So I would make a motion to, um, to cancel the Memorial Day uh, parade, public parade um, for 2021. Dave Wolf in a second. Thank you, Dave. Okay. If there's no further discussion, and again, thank you to John Sis. All those yes. in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Okay, thank you. Thank Make you. sure, Casey, you let John know how much we appreciate um, everything yeah. he does. Okay, um, Trevor, do you want to read the opening sure. of the? Absolutely, it is 615. So uh, notice of public hearing in accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, the Select Board acting as a local licensing authority for the Town of Deerfield hereby provides notice that they will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, April 8th, 2021 at uh, April, excuse me, April 7th, 2021 at 6.15 p.m. in the main meeting room at Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373 on the application of Berkshire Brewing Company for an alteration of license, uh, of license premise. Um, additional outdoor space for customers to be uh, created in the front and rear of the brewery for a beer garden. Additional seating created by extending the indoor tap room space. Uh, liquor license number 04119-RS-0276. Uh, the premise is located at 12 Railroad Street, Deerfield, Mass, 01373. Verbal comments will be accepted here at the hearing tonight. Uh, this obviously is also on Zoom, the meeting um, Zoom. Uh, you also can get to this by going to Deerfield um, Mass, uh, Deerfield's town website. And again, down by the calendar, you can click on the Zoom link um, and it's here broadcast on FCAT. So you can make comments there. The phone numbers are all the same as our beginning meeting. So welcome everybody. Thank you, um, Diane and Gary. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, so we'll turn it over to you to do a presentation. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Dave. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> thank you. Um, well, you know, this is uh, kind of part of history in the sense that uh, for the past two years, we have actually had an outdoor beer garden in the front section of our brewery. Um, in case you guys, but I'm sure you're very well aware that uh, we're changing the name of Deerfield to Beerfield with the welcoming of Treehouse coming in. Uh, you're yeah. going to have three breweries all within walking distance of one another. And uh, the beer, the craft beer industry is still blossoming and, and growing and our customer base is demanding that uh, we service them. And uh, right. the past two years, uh, we've had uh, an outdoor beer garden that's been approved both by the health inspector and the police department. Um, we've had uh, virtually no problems at all. Uh, and we also, uh, in anticipation of a larger crowd coming with uh, Treehouse coming into town, uh, we have a section of green in the back of our brewery that is surrounded by a six foot high stockade fence that we would like to uh, turn into an additional beer garden. 
uh, maybe put in a few horseshoe pits, a few barbecue stations, and tie it into the Leary lot, hoping that uh, the parking lot park will become a uh, reality. Uh, yeah. And we'd like to be part of, of that growth as well. That's wonderful. I, I'm so <laughs> excited about, about that. And I, uh, we are trying to get, you know, get the Leary lot figured out, working with the businesses around there. And, and, and I'm so happy that you're thinking about doing this. The whole idea is to kind of, you know, work as partners to kind of design that as, as beneficial to all as possible. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about your, about your project. We're, we're hoping to connect it to your, um, to your property, Gary. So um, people can park and then, you know, just walk in that way. Well, there's a lot of beautiful space out there that could certainly be turned into an accommodating place. Yep, for sure. So, uh, you know, the addition of that beer garden there would be the cornerstone of what we potentially could do with that Leary lot. And it's really enhanced that whole area. Um, I, I really look forward to it. Mm. Yeah, we're, we're trying to make it green in the sense that it would be per, uh, impervious, I mean, pervious surface with, you know, trees and, you know, green space and stuff like that. I think all of us look at Portsmouth, New Hampshire and, you know, what they've done with Portsmouth and, and try to, you know, envision what we're trying to do downtown South Deerfield. I know it seems like it's a reach, but it's not not if everything is marching towards the same kind of look. So we're trying to be consistent. We're trying to line up grant money and um, make it as least expensive to us as a town, but also it would be so much nicer to enhance the downtown. So it, it's a tremendous piece. I mean, it could really lend itself to a farmer's market or mm -hmm. an artist uh, colony at the same time. Sure. Uh, really bring people into the center of town, which is something I think we've all been wanting to do for as, least as long as we've been here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we want to try and work with all the all the owners around there to try and figure out a way. What we would really love is, is access off of Elm Street so that we could do a, you know, a full loop. It could be one way traffic, safer, um, provide parking for the businesses there, just kind of figure out how we swap things around to make sure everybody uh, wins in this in this um, redesign and I think it I think it can work if everyone comes to the table so we're excited that you're willing to work with us on that too um, so I just had a, a, a couple of questions okay. and, and just making sure that the um, I see that all the abutters were notified and we'll we'll take some comment on that too and I did notice that um, uh, the health inspector had no issues at this time Neither did the building inspector, although he did notice um, that we would need a, uh, you would need a, a building permit, obviously, for the work that you would do inside, expanding some stuff. And I'm sure you're probably aware of that already. Um, and then the police chief had no no issues no either. Yeah. And I do believe the fire department had no no concerns either. You're all up to speed there as well. So um, I I really don't I don't have any other questions. I'll let others speak. Is there anybody that had comments on this? Uh, uh, this is uh, Sally Mustalis. I'm on the corner lot. I just have one question. Is this going to replace the, um, the front beer garden or is this going to be in addition to the front beer garden? Um, ideally, Sally, we would like to move everything around to the back side of the brewery. Okay. That, that would be excellent. <laughs> it may, I think it may take a little time right before that yep. happens, but, um, yep. but yeah, I think yep. that is the goal as we develop Leary lot and can kind of move everything towards the back. And, you know, I think it'd be, it'd be better long run for everybody. So for the sure. Front, okay. and, the front and was in the interim, what is going to happen to the front end for until that happens? Um, I was just going to say from the Board of Health point of view, um, uh, the front end is open because uh, of the COVID conditions so far. Yes, I, un yes, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, and, the, and that has it, changed. Okay. So, we, so there won't be a, an additional 20 picnic tables out there while you're working on the back section. Is that uh, the, correct? The, there's no room for 20 more tables. Well, I, I just put that number out there, but 
are you anticipating adding more tables because it's it's so congested there as it is with people coming and going um i i was just i'm just curious mm-hmm. uh, what, no. what your plans are yeah thank you we're we're not planning on expanding it uh okay more than it is currently and um is are you having an issue with traffic flow i mean is there something we well, can well i i have an issue with uh people stealing the fruit off of my trees while they're <laughs> walking in and out of the the your fruit uh beer garden huh? and i can't and then i and i'm saying this with 100% certainty because i've caught people <laughs> and then they look at me saying, oh, I didn't see you there. We thought these were just for picking. And, you know, I don't appreciate things like that. And with people walking in and out next to my property, it's happening. Okay. Is, and the, the other problem, I, okay, I'm, I'm we'll so start with that one. Is that the peach tree that's on the corner? It's any of the peach trees. All right, because that that one peach tree is like falling over and is actually on our property. So it, the section, the sec where they were picking, they came around the fence into my property and picked peaches. I was standing right there, and then they looked up and went, "Oh." Hmm. Well, what you, are you doing here? Uh, and I'm going, <laughs> well, excuse me for, for being on my own property. And it happened more than once. How do you comment? Okay. Uh, we, so, we certainly don't encourage our patrons to pick your fruit. Um, and we could certainly so, post a yeah. sign there on the corner to let them know that it's not available for, uh, for the taking. That would be great, Gary. Thank you. Did you have another comment? I think you. you um, yes, another. I do. Um, in terms of music, um, is that going to continue? Because the last uh, I knew, there was no music permit, um, outside music permit for the beer garden. I know when you were talking about putting in a restaurant in the back. You said there may be music now and again, like dinner music. And what was being played during the summer was not dinner music. And there were games being played out there, that that game where you throw the the sack into the board, and all I'd hear is... No, uh, there was no you know? uh, there was no cornhole last year because of... COVID. Yes, there was. No, there no, was, there there, was there, not. I can tell you... I can tell no, there you there was not. What, yes, there was. Then what, <laughs> what must was have been that? hearing something else. Well, then what was it? it was going. You hear that? <laughs> That's sure. what was going on over there. And I walked by and they were throwing things into a cornhole. Well, why would I lie about something like that? Well, why would we want to uh, go against all the rules and regs of... Uh... Well, I don't know. I don't know if people brought it in. I don't know, but I'm just bringing it up because I'm going, oh, man, you know, it would be at 8 o'clock at night, you know, just before you close, I hear, crack, crack, crack. Which? You know, and, and that's the kind of thing that apparently it's not being monitored. And that's what I'm concerned about. Okay, thank you for maybe that. There has to be, maybe there has to be a little bit more training for your employees that these things do not happen. Well, we can look into it. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other comments? No, not from okay. me. Yeah, well, thank you very much for making making your voice heard. Anybody else would like to speak? All right. Um, <clears throat> Gary, I'll take a motion. Well, Gary, do you want to say anything before we vote on this? Well, I didn't know if there was somebody else. Was Gary Allen, were you looking to make a comment as well? 
may I? Sure, oh, sure. You could. Yeah. Welcome. Um, thank you. Uh, I don't live next door to the brewery, so I can't compare my concerns or feelings to the last person who was speaking. Mm -hmm. um, I understand how she feels. I can only say that um, Gary's been a good business person. Uh, I believe the town has benefited from his presence. And I think it's time that we help him keep up with the rest of the industry that he's essentially the father of. <laughs> You know, I mean, if you want to blame something on Gary, blame craft brewing on him. <laughs> you know, um, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, very much. Yes, we're working very hard to be um, supportive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So um, I've been a, a fan of what's happening at Berkshire Brewing and the Beer Garden. Um, and I go there not infrequently, and there's been a wonderful community of people that's grown up around that beer garden experience, whether indoors or not outdoors or whatever it's been. Um, dozens of local people, you know, who've lived in this, country, uh, this town for their lives, coming mm -hmm. in and having um, community. And... Um, that seems what's happening with this industry. Uh, if you look at all the other like things in Shelburne Falls or Montague or wherever it is, that's what's going on. And today I was uh, driving into the Y in Greenfield and look at that, Hope and Olive is setting up the whole new uh, you know, outdoor space, uh, taking up all these parking spaces in the Greenfield lot. Um, so that's costing Greenfield. Uh, this garden does not cost Deerfield anything. If anything, right. it adds value to coming into town. So I, I would like really suggest we want to support this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you I'd like to second yes, that. That was that was excellent. I am a neighbor, and I do uh, frequent, you know, the BBC, and they've been phenomenal. There is a great. Um, just a great group of people. You know, you meet people, you see people from times past or what have you, people you haven't seen in a while, people who are not from the area even coming to visit because of the whole brewery thing. It's been really nice. And, you know, the employees um, were extremely strict last summer with the COVID restrictions. Um, I, I felt very safe. Um, obviously, I'm not there all the time. I understand, you know, there's someone who's, who's upset about maybe what cornhole sounds like. Um, but I know when I was there, it was, it was very strict and very controlled environment. Um, very nice place to just be even, even just to kind of check in and, and say hello. I support you. Yes, Rita. Rita. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say, I think Gary does try to be a good neighbor and I'm sure he'll address the concerns of the abutter and I'm not an abutter. So I share her concerns that yes, I would like to have whatever concern I raise dealt with, but I think Gary will. And I'd like to stay, uh, say, stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that the sounds of, of community and coming together is so needed right now after a year and more of, of what we've all gone through. I just can't wait. Um, and, and that's what I long for. And I'm encouraging everybody to get shots and stay safe so we can join together as a community again and, and share our lives with each other and it's a wonderful town and this would be a wonderful place to um to spend a little time with each other so thank yeah you. and we've been we've been really trying to hustle for grant to get that leary lot in shape and you know make it a connector so um we're hoping anyway and and with that additional parking back there and and accessing from that end of um the establishment that would relieve some of the you know from the butter's point of view might relieve some of the stress so Anyway, um, I will entertain a motion on this. Uh, David, do you want to comment, uh, David? Yeah, I was just going to say, BBC has a long history of being community involved, going back to the certainly old certainly do. Days. Um, you know, it's, um, and, you know, my personal relationship with Gary has always been very positive. 
um, and you know he is very concerned about the community and his works with the community. Great. Uh, it's, uh, um, as as far as um, COVID can you know COVID situation and all the years that I've worked with Gary, he's always been so um, cooperative and willing to work with us and. Um, understands our position as regulators, and we've never had any issues whatsoever that haven't been resolved and worked through. So, um, I, I mean, I'm very supportive too. So, if there's no other comments. I would um, make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you, Trevor. Trevor? Dave Wolfman, second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Aye, Carolyn Ness. I would entertain a motion now to approve this. I make a motion to uh, approve the uh, expansion of the beer garden at 12 Railroad Street in Deerfield, Mass for Berkshire Brewing Company. Dave Wolfram, second. Um, hearing no other further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, thank you um, all. Diane, for coming in. And thank you, thank for you everyone comments. for showing up. I appreciate it. Yep. Um, I appreciate everyone's comments. And okay, we have 745. We have spring sports discussion. Um, so we have uh, 10 more minutes. 645, Carolyn. Oh, sorry. 645. Oh, 645. Yeah. Um, what did I say? I, I'm sorry. I think uh, I meant 645. So we have 10 more minutes. Um, so the next item on the agenda is Deerfield Lions Club, 75th um, anniversary resolution. Um, Casey had prepared a resolution for us, um, for us to vote on. Casey, would you um, just talk about it a little bit? Yes. So Pam Hodgkins, who has been a longtime president of Deerfield Lions Club, got in touch with me. And Pam and I knew each other in my first iteration working for the town. And so I was well aware of the great work that they do. Mm -hmm. The Essentially, the Lions Club is celebrating its 75th anniversary on April 12th. The club has a long history of dedicated community service in Deerfield. And one of the things many of us would remember is the fundraising projects that they've engaged in, including the annual antique car show. Yep. And unfortunately, that that was interrupted, but for 25 years, that was something that all of us, particularly me in the office, saw Loved a lot it. of, because I handled a lot of the requests and information that went back and forth between Pam and some of the other presidents. Mm. Um, but the club has also donated, and I know other clubs do this, but particularly Deerfields, has donated to the Lion's Eye Research Fund. And that has helped immensely to eradicate blindness. And they've led that charge to some extent in the Western Mass area. So they continue to serve the community. And I think this resolution just demonstrates the town's support of the good work that they do and the cooperative, collaborative feeling between the town and the, and the club itself. Mm. I, I, I completely agree. I've, I met Pam when I started working. She is uh, part of the Deerfield Common um, Ad Hoc Committee. And so uh, just all the valuable information she has shared with us there and you know just donating the benches that are there from years back was a Lions Club thing. I mean they've done so much for our community and um, I was just reading a little bit about the Lions Club you know internationally and where it started and uh, who started it and all of that. It's pretty fascinating work so um, but it, it is about embedding people's lives through, through community service and so grateful to have them in our area. Yeah and you know, it's uh, as an EMT that served the town for over 30 years, uh, the Lions Club was essential in getting our very first ambulance to form Deerfield Rescue. Yes. Uh, they, they donated, uh, we called it the pregnant roller skate because it was a van that they added like 18 inches to the center of it. <laughs> uh, but it was um, the building block for what now is South County EMS. Right. And, um, it was all... And, you know, I have a history of probably 55 years with the Lions Club because of my uncle and stuff. Uh, we used to do the turkey shoots with them over in the Sunland Town Park. <laughs> and it's, um, it's, it's been an amazing group. 
And I, and I just want to say that what I really appreciate every year is the lights on Sugarloaf, um, mm -hmm. especially this past year, it was seemingly even more important. So I think it's, I would love to support this. So I will entertain a motion. I don't have a copy of that in front of me, or I oh. will read it. Um, oh, I do. Know. I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see it. I see it. It's do you want me to read that? Sure. So Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Deerfield, resolution, be it resolved that we, the board of uh, the select board for the Town of Deerfield, hereby congratulate the Deerfield Lions Club on, their, on this, their 75th anniversary of the founding of the club. We recognize and commend your outstanding achievements in the service to the community. Um, I would second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Thank you very, very much, Pam. Yes. Um, I, uh, Dave, I think you're the only one that needs to come in and sign it. Trevor and I did it this afternoon in anticipation yeah. of having it voted. Um, the opportunities under the next item is the opportunities under the act creating a municipal and public safety building authority. Um, this is, we're hoping to, this is uh, Joe Cumberford's um, SD 1035 bill. Um, I had found out about this and Casey um, did more research. And um, I think this is gonna be ideal for us for the senior center. Um, if we don't get any help from McGovern's office. And um, so, uh, Casey, do you want to just talk about what you've turned up under this? The I gave everyone in their packet a copy of the bill. Yep. Essentially, this would function in a similar manner as the school building authority does. And it would give towns and public safety, I don't know, it's public safety entities. Sometimes they're like, like we have, sometimes mm -hmm. they're separate from a municipality but it would give them access to grant funding sources in a similar manner as the school building authority. And so it could be really useful, particularly for small towns who don't have a lot of ability to raise funds in a manner that a city might. So this, and this is something that I'm pretty sure many of my colleagues have mentioned, but it must have really it must have really made an impact on Joe to hear one of my former colleagues discuss an issue in Ashfield, which was their fire department. It's over 60 years old and the OSHA requirements to fix it far outweigh the costs to actually replace the building. And so there was an article that I tried to make sure you saw where Del Haskins, who's the fire chief, explain that and it really it really highlights the issues that small towns face when they're trying to get building projects off the ground now we do know that the school building authority has some restrictions and some limitations in how things can connect on the other hand it's a source of funding that can be extremely useful when you're facing a multi-million dollar project and so the senior center, as it's been discussed in different iterations and will continue to be discussed, could this could be really beneficial to meet the needs of the seniors, not just in Deerfield, but in Waitley and Sunderland, who also participate in South County's efforts to, to serve the seniors in the area. Mm -hmm. So this is one tool in the toolbox if we can get it passed. And I think if the board would be willing to send a letter to Joe's office, to identify some of the benefits that they see and certainly thank her for sponsoring this. Yep. I think it would go a long way to yep. helping this get off the ground. I definitely support that and I encourage a letter. And then um, I would also recommend to maybe uh, as they're developing this, they could really study what they, what are some of the drawbacks of like the library program and, this, and, and different, um, different entities that they have now where everything is siloed in the state when you're dealing with something it has to be just the library and we're 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 a community right now where we need a new town hall we need a not right away but we, this building is aging we have you know multiple buildings a church a senior center we need to redo and, and the library is looking to expand and because of the way the grants work in these funding authorities you cannot mix 
two buildings together. Um, and, you know, for efficiency of heating and cooling and just space, you know, community rooms, that kind of thing. If, if, if this authority could uh, recognize that those are serious drawbacks um, to their programs um, that would help us work together and, and build two buildings to serve, you know, for one building to serve two needs, right. that would be, that'd be really great. So. Yeah, I think it's the flexibility that we're concerned mm -hmm. about, um, especially for small towns. You know, we're not to try to make one rule for the entire state. And when you have such a wide range of communities that it would just be nice if there was more flexibility built in mm -hmm. to adjust for the size of the community and what is really needed in the community. Yep. But yeah, very in favor of this. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we'll have further discussion on uh, our own building issues here. Um, yes. Do you have a timeline on that? Because I had a, a few people had questions on that and I didn't really actually have an answer on uh, when the feasibility study was going to be done. So what we had identified was a capital project request to do a needs assessment and a feasibility study. And capital digested that for several meetings and eventually they approved that request pending a priority structure of how to deal with capital this year. Right. And so that is actually split. First of all, it's based on some funding that we hope to get through the district local technical assistance grants that the COG okay. usually helps us with, but it's also split amongst the three towns and there was significant enthusiasm on the part of the other town representatives that I spoke to about yeah. this. And I think, didn't the boo discuss it as well, Trevor? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. Board of Oversight for South County Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So we did, we've, we've done a measured sort of approach to this. And the building advisory committee also had two information sessions in February that I moderated. And it was interesting to see the evaluation of the studies that had been done on both the church, on the senior center, on the town hall, on the library. So all of that came came up, but there was a particular focus on the senior center and on the church. So I think as things progress, it will be interesting to see what the results are, but really we need to do a needs assessment of senior services to determine how to provide what needs to be provided, and then the feasibility of what that looks like in a building. And so if there was some flexibility in a program like this to share fun funds amongst other programs or share community spaces, I think it would make it easier for us to provide that community uh, service and also a commu really get community engagement mm -hmm. on other issues. Because if there's a communal space that folks can participate in and enjoy, I think you get more turnout for certain yep. activities. Um, TBAC does have a meeting coming up to discuss this too. I think it's next week, but I can't remember the day off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. Um, we are now um, ready to, I think it's 6.15. Uh, 6.45, yep. 6.45. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting a time. I'm, I'm not getting the time right. I have not, I've been drinking only water. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Okay, at 6.45, we're supposed to be discussing the spring sports program. And we had invited the um, school committee here. And I didn't know if um, anyone wants to, oh, I see I see some here. Um, Bill's here. Yep. Yeah, Bill, do you wanna call your committee to, together? Yes, yeah, so we can call the frontier part of the meeting to order. We voted last night to proceed with spring sports, but we, we did that because we were meeting last night. We were just waiting to hear from you guys tonight if we can actually go ahead with that. Great. Okay. Um, well, I um, have been in contact with Carl, um, the um, athletic director back and forth and feel very com comfortable. Wrestling is has still not been approved yet, um, which was really my concern. Um, baseball, softball, boys and girls track are, and tennis are all outside. Mm -hmm. And it certainly seems like the protocols are fine. Um, the girls do have a uh, track, do um, have, you know, lower, uh, valley communities that they compete against. Um, but at this outdoors. point, yeah, it is outdoors. If everyone is so super careful, 
I feel like um, that's not, you know, not really a problem, but I'd like to turn it over to Carl so he can explain the things that were a concern, like it, in basketball, you know, locker room use, all that kind of stuff. He, he'll address it and um, uh, explain what's happening. So everyone feels comfortable. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, yeah, like Carolyn said, we're, you know, we're following all the EEA and MIA guidelines uh, and going above and beyond in a lot of ways. Um, one example that she just mentioned is the locker rooms. We're not using the locker rooms, which I know has been a bit of an inconvenience for, for players. And um, But it's it's one of those things that, from what Carolyn tells me, that's where a lot of cases have come from across the state. Um, so the uh, way I think we're looking at it is a little inconvenience for that it goes a long way to keep the sports going. Um, other things, I mean, again, these are all really, there's no contact sports really, other than, you know, a slide into second base, you know, we're outside, um, plenty of space at our facilities for spectators to spread out. Um, it's, it's really kind of a whole different animal compared to when we were talking um, in the winter with basketball indoors contacts. Um, athletes are still wearing masks, we're still providing sanitizer, um, all that kind of stuff that, that we've done in the past. Um, mm -hmm. The MIA has approved a sectional and state tournament. Um, so, and we can opt into that if we want. It's not based on record like it normally is. Mm -hmm. um, and if we opt in, the, that tournament wouldn't start until the, the Western Mass part of the tournament wouldn't start until after June 15th. So we're actually all out of school by then, which is a right. positive um, in that the kids wouldn't be coming back into the building. Right. Um, and then... Yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, if there's questions, it might be easier at this point. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I just wanted to add, um, you know, because I, I go to a lot of DPH meetings and um, they've done some analysis of the basketball clusters and that occurred. And it was not from opposing team to opposing team. It was um, within the same basketball team. And they really tracked it down to activities in a locker room or um, outside, um, you know, school, you know, people hanging out together and, or, you know, transportation to and from games. So I, I, Carl, I must say, has been wonderful, making sure that, um, you know, we have the rosters, we, um, you know, are limiting, um, you know, spectators, even though it's outside at this point, because of the concern, um, we want to keep the schools open and safe, um, two, two persons per, you know, team member, whether it's opposing or home team. Um, and, and we're doing everything, you know, we, we're ready for contact tracing and to contain it as soon as possible. And I think that that has been the key over all the sports from, you know, for this entire year is the ability to do contact tracing. And Carl has made, it's, it's, it's been a super headache and a pain in the neck, but he has been really, really hanging in there and doing it and, and, you know, checking off everybody that comes in. I mean, this is a huge amount of work and effort, but it has truly kept the kids safe. But on the other hand, I just want to also mention that the kids have really made an effort to be safe too. I mean, you've got to have compliance and you've got to have the ability to follow through and the kids seemingly have really been excellent. And, and as a result, I, I feel like um, I would definitely recommend the spring sports season and, um, and just to continue to be vigilant because um, the variants are out there. It's definitely why all the spikes are happening. Uh, in cases, um, and we just have to be, you know, keep doing the protocol that we have. So um, as a Board of Health member, I just want to commend uh, Carl, his team, and, um, and Darius and the administration and the school, Frontier School Committee for really taking this serious and working hard to make sure that the kids have access to sport and um, and, and, and also be safe. I know that, you know, we've, we've fielded calls of people upset that they couldn't watch, you know, uh, come from out of the area here to watch a game or, or go somewhere else to watch a game, but it, it's allowed the kids to be safe and to, um, to continue with sports. Um, I'm just so proud of this team and, and Carl's work uh, to keep everybody safe. So I, I have no concerns going forward at all, just based on the track record that, that you've all set. You've done a great job and I'm very proud of you. So thank you. Dave, did you have anything you'd like to say? No. 
Um, I'm just, you know, the school's done an excellent job, all the personnel there uh, to keep the children safe. And, you know, they continue to do that. And I couldn't be uh, happier with, with the results that we have. Uh, any cases we've had don't appear to be anything to do sports related. It's from, uh, it's from a family type yep. exposure. So, Good. Um, and the schools always acted very quickly on it. So, and so. again, I just uh, what's happening at the school level, the testing, the pool testing, um, you know, the cooperation between the school nurses, like Meg Birch has organized yeah. everyone, Darius, and everybody has been taking this super serious, and it has been really just lovely to work with. I have to say, and and it and we, we've been able to keep the kids safe. So, I will entertain a motion to approve the spring sports. So move, Trevor McDaniel. Dave Wolfman second it. Is there any further discussion? Does anyone want to make a comment? Okay, hearing none. Oh, oh. got a comment, oh. uh, Olivia. Okay. You're on. Um, I was just wondering if um, the two adults. I'm not saying we should or should not have more than two people watching. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's a an MIAA thing or a school thing or a board of health decision. Like, I was just wondering, like. It's a board Where's of health. It's a board okay. of health decision. It's it's based on our ability to contact trace if there was an yep. exposure. Yep. I I I know oh, I, that, I'm all for it. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't know, have to sell me on it. I we, am we, so for that. <laughs> we we it, it's just it's just that every single um, meeting that I go to, it always boils down to the ability to contact trace in a very swift manner. Yep. And when anything comes across on Maven, within two or three hours, we're on it and, and we're contact tracing it. And our first first question is, is this, is your school exposure? What's happening? You know, and we and we really take this very seriously. And um, so if there was an exposure on the school grounds, the idea would be to be able to get to it right away. And that's why Carl having a list and 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 you know knowing who is there all the time is is ex is excessive amount of work. It but is. <laughs> is the ability for us to be able to contact trace within two or three hours. It's just that you know there's limited number of people that can do that. So um, you absolutely. Know, at this point, we're still going to keep the spectators at two per player, but. Um, well, I was even just wondering only because. Um, my kids do track and um you know before they had about 70 girls on the girls track team and that's a crazy number and so then like not that we need to limit it now or anything I was just wondering because that's going to be a huge headache for Carl to have to keep track of that many families and who they're bringing um so I was just trying to like I, I don't know like I, I don't even know what I was trying to do I was just wondering if there was you know if we were going to need to cut that down or only have people come to certain meets, you know what I mean? Um, just to make that easier for him and for the field to have that many kids and adults. <laughs> Carl, do you want to address it if you yep. want? So um, I believe the max at, a, at an event is 150. So, um, okay. but, I will, but I will say that right currently there's a week left of signups for spring sports and there's about 25 kids signed up, boys signed up for boys and 25 for girls. So I know that's less than nor in a normal year, Absolutely. but if it, comes, if it comes to the point where, you know, there's, a, there's more people than we can have, then we certainly can get some sort of rotation, um, you know, at our home event. Cause we have, we, I think we typically have a bigger team than other schools. Um, Absolutely. But again, it looks like less than normal. So yep. not so much of a concern. And they don't, they don't have a meet together. The girls and boys have separate meets. Right. So that cuts awesome. down the numbers. So. I just want to just again, say it's the, the aerosols that are the, what, it really is what is contagious. And so as long as people wear masks and they have some social distancing, um, it, you know, it's still relatively safe and you're outside. Yeah. And it, it, as you're outside is totally different than being like in the gym, you know? I mean, we were so concerned about basketball and we made it through. And part of it is because the kids were so good and kept the door open as much as possible. And, you know, Carl did a fantastic job. Um, is Can there any other comment? comment? No. Hearing none, all those um, in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. Thank you to Thank the school committee. Frontier.
Um, and thank you, thank Carl. You, Darius, yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the nice weather. Yep. Do you want to adjourn? Do you need to adjourn, Bill? Or do you, do you formally? Have... Well, I did. I did open the meeting on behalf of Mr. Halla, but he's here now, so he can take it from here. All right. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to adjourn your meeting? There it is. There it goes. Um, motion to adjourn from Frontier. Move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Second. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Goodbye, everybody. Aye. Thank oh, you for coming. Thank you for coming, everybody. Appreciate your support. Thank you. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is the Select Board Board of Health Adjustments and Town Meeting Preparation. Um, I just want to say that. Uh, her hand up. Oh, Casey, go ahead. I just wanted to let everybody know I checked the schedule and the Town Building Advisory Committee, TBAC, is meeting on Monday at 5.30 in case oh. anybody wants to listen to the the information and how TBAC digests their two information sessions about the okay. town buildings. Oh, thank you for checking for that. Um, I'll put it in our book. Um, okay, I just wanna say that we're working very hard to um, make the position of um, uh, social worker available to the town. Um, there's a slight complication in the fact that we haven't been able to verify uh, the, the position at the, at the um, senior center. Casey, do you, do you know um, how we're gonna check that out or Trevor? Well, it really, you know, uh, the state's way behind on that. And they, you know, yes. when, when I think Kate, uh, Christina spoke about the outreach position grant, which is a SIG grant, she wasn't sure she would hear until July whether they even have uh, a grant this funding. year. So I think funding is very difficult. I, I, I'm concerned with this position as far as funding goes because, and, and liability. I mean, I think it's great. It's a great idea. Um, we just got to figure out how to do this um, with, with um, it, it just, it needs to be, uh, I think flushed out a little bit more as far as funding, liability, who's paying for it, grant funded, um, to make sure it happens. Um, I just think there's quite a bit more to, to discuss here. Um, I, I, I would just like to say that um, I'm working very hard, again, backing up a bit, this, we're talking about relatively new positions, um, but I think we can, we can um, cob together some grant funding. There's compelling reason, I think, to have it in, happen. And, um, I, I feel very strongly, uh, um, I'm gonna to talk to the community health center um, in discussions with the, our, our insurance carrier. There still is not a clear answer yet from our insurance carrier. Um, but I feel like between the billing, um, which um, maybe community health center would be able to do for us, similar to the um, uh, CSO situation where there is no, um, we don't pay them like we would pay UMass. We, we could fall back on UMass, but we would end up paying a fee. So uh, we're trying to work that out. And we're trying to work out um, you know, a full-time position or nearly full-time position um, or two part-time positions so that we wouldn't have uh, you know, benefits. So um, we're working on it. And I'm hoping that we'll have more information for next week when we have talk about the capital improvement plan. I, I what you're talking about is important, Trevor. I, I I understand the liability thing. That's absolutely true. We have to be able to make sure it's covered under um, our municipal liability. Um, and it's just that this came up fast and um, I know, I know. You know, there's so many needs in this town right now. Uh, not, they're all valid. I mean, they are, we need a town planner to get economic development in here so that we have money in our budget to be able to fund these things. There's a lot that needs to happen. And so I completely recognize the need, especially after a, year, a horrendous year like this. Um, we just got to figure out a way that, you know, it can be funded. Yes. Um, 
I, I think most of the hours would be billable. Some of the stuff is definitely COVID related. So um, even if we have to front some money, I think it would be able to come under. We haven't had any more real information, Casey, from our what we're, what's coming from the federal government. No guidance yet still. I, have, no. I, I couldn't find anything online because, um, you know, I, I'm sure that we can make a case for this um, to start the funding. But, uh, you know, I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, so, so my first information session that I'm scheduled to attend with the small town administrators is the 21st of mm -hmm. April. So I'm hoping we'll have more information by then. Is that during the day, right? Yes. Okay. And, and, do and we usually have... they send us the slideshow so I can send it out to you as soon as I can, as soon as I get okay. it myself. Do you know, have they nailed down exactly how much we're supposed to get yet? So the guidance this morning at my other STAM meeting was the, they don't expect the numbers that were estimates to change substantially. Up or down? They just haven't finalized, yes. Up okay. Down. So. So it could be between 1.2 and 1.4 million, right? Yeah. Still. Okay. That's just still the same thing I'm getting on any of my meetings. Um, yeah. and it, and it's definitely for COVID related expenses. There's four categories that that falls into. So it, it, the, and so that's the question is what's the interpretation of what the four categories are. That's what we're waiting for more information from the okay. federal government about. Yeah. And this is about the same timeline they had when they first created the FEMA reimbursement um, grant program, not CARES, but the FEMA one. It took several weeks for them to roll the information out. Do you, uh, is MMA putting anything out or is this STAM leading it? Actually, it was MMA and STAM. It just so happened that they did a, presen they did a presentation for STAM's quarterly meeting. So oh. we got a legislative update and they're gonna to continue to roll this information out. It just so happened Stam had already asked for information on American Rescue. So we scheduled somebody for a, an hour long meeting to get an overview. Okay, thanks. All right, well, I'm hoping to have more information by next week then on this, um, on how we can make this happen because I, I feel like this can happen and it, and it can be sustained um, through insurance billing and um, some other grant funding, if we can work the SIG grant into this or not, I don't know. Um, but I, I feel like there's, you know, the senior community definitely um, would benefit by having um, a real social worker available to them as well. And um, somehow we can turn that money from the outreach coordinator into, uh, you know, a social worker position and supplement that, that would be so much more effective. And then we could just add a few more hours on um, for other, you know, community members, uh, families, and, you know, people that would, you know, sort of, you know, f fall through the cracks kind of thing and referrals and stuff. I think that would be really important. So, um, I mean, this is an area that people just don't have much experience and it's just very hard to find the right, connection and stuff like that. So as a community, I think if we had a resource person, even if they do more outreach rather than actual social work, it would be so much more beneficial for people. So um, I'm going to still work on this and hopefully we'll have some resolution um, and more information by next week um, that would reassure you, Trevor and Dave, um, that we can be afford that this can be affordable. Okay. Dave, did you have any other questions? I mean, Trevor's insurance thing, I am, I am tracking no, down, but did you have some other questions maybe? Don't, you know, funding is obviously a, a major concern. Okay. And, you know, I see the need for community nursing as a higher priority and, you know, looking at what we can do for that to expand our community nursing. I agree with that. Um, it's been a really, um, there's 16 or 17 communities now that work with Lisa and 
you know, for the amount of money we pay and, you know, we don't, I'm not sure if we have all our hours for regular public health work. We certainly are using COVID hours, but um, that's not addressing the underlying needs that are already here. Yeah. And um, so, yes, I'm so hoping to used. get that resolved. And I okay. just make sure that all the budgeting on this does go through the Board of Health and not one of our other departments. Yes, no, we're, we're doing this under the Board of Health. Okay. Um, I feel very strongly it's, board of, it's, it's public health. This is not, um, I mean, the, the arguments I know Annalise on, I see Annie's here too. This is definitely um, public health, I think. Annie or Annalie, would you like to make any comments? Uh, just, just before that, Alex, can you mute the phone number 310? Or if, if I'm not sure if that's Chris, Chris's line. Chris. Uh, there. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, go ahead. Hi, guys. I'm Annie Curtis. I'm one of the um, one of the citizens who sort of came up with this idea. Um, and I just, I'm also a social worker. Um, so I think that's probably a little bit of a helpful perspective. But um, Trevor, you spoke about liability and questions around that. And I don't know a lot about town liability, but I do know that was a question that we had as social workers when we spoke with several other municipal social workers. And that was, you know, cause we're dealing with some pretty precarious situations often. Okay. So um, at least when we're independent social workers, we are licensed to operate on our own and we carry our own liability insurance. Um, so that was one of the reflections that the um, other social workers had indicated. It, ha it really should be an independently licensed social worker because there's all different levels um, mm -hmm. of licensure for social worker. So that's just one thing to think about um, as, as you're thinking about liability. And also at least, I think it was the Medford, the, the city of Medford, we spoke with their municipal social worker um, in their town it's um, under the guise of the public health department. And I know there's probably different insurance policies for different towns, but because they, they interpret it as an essential health service and it ties into their charter, it was then um, qualified under their city insurance as well. So there are other towns that are doing this. I recognize that Deerfield is kind of different than maybe some other towns as well, but um, other towns have figured out how to work through the liability between having an independently licensed social worker and it being tied into the town charter. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think about like, well, so, and then I would like to see studies of, you know, how many cases, what, what's the population of the communities that are using it? How many cases do they deal with? What type of cases? What are the histories there? Where, you know, where did it come about? Um, cause I do see the need and I just, you know, there are so many, um, areas we don't have, you know, I spent all day working on our sewer and we're, you know, we have $56 million worth of stuff we have to spend to fix sewers. Right. And that's not glamorous. It's awful. Like I would love to be but funding five social workers and, and, um, sidewalks, you know, that I get beat up for all the time, but. <laughs> um, but I do have to recognize, you know, where this is a need and, um, and just trying to figure out how big of a need, uh, can we share it with any other communities? How do we fund it, the liability of it, that kind of thing. So just need some, some answers. Trevor, on I'm, you know, absolutely, absolutely concerned about the same thing. I'm, I'm pushing this because I think it's needed, but I, agree. I, I, I also am really aware that we have to be able to fund it. Um, yeah. We just need verification from our insurance carrier, Annie, mm -hmm. that it is a normal municipal operation. And um, he's doing research on that. And I was hoping, I, I told him I had a meeting tonight that I would appreciate an answer, but he didn't get yeah. back to me yet. Um, we've been back and forth on the phone. So he is re definitely researching. It's not just blowing us off. Um, so it, it, it's happening. It is happening fast, but I'm, you know, we're, we're trying to squeeze it into this budget process, you know, this budget year so that we can start, you know, um, you know, in the new year. 
And um, so that's why it seems like it's, it is rushed, but I, I, I don't want to wait another whole year. If there is an opportunity to get it started and um, I feel like we could get it started um, with COVID money and different opportunities we're working on. So I will hope, hopefully have more discussion on our net meeting, meeting next week. Um, and hopefully everybody will be on board. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is the Eversource charging station. Yes. Um, host so agreement. this is the host agreement for the infrastructure installation that Eversource, that we had discussed with Eversource back in December and January. Um, so what's at that, get, uh, Casey? Essentially, now that they have the funding set up and we were on their list, they need us to, they need the board to approve the documents pending town council's final review. There's two documents. There's the consolidated agreement and there's a legal wrapper. And the legal wrapper basically points back to the consolidated agreement and identifies the, hold on, I have a note. I just have to scroll. <laughs> it identifies the same language that's found in the filed and approved tariff rates. So it's, it's something that has been identified that has to be separate, but goes along with the consolidated agreement. So you guys had approved the consolidated agreement before we found out there was no Eversource funding. So now that the funding's in place and we've responded to their questions about the plans, Kevin did that for me. I would need the board to approve the agreement and legal wrapper pending council's final review and authorize a signatory to sign the document. Well, I'm just a little nervous that it keeps getting more complicated. Mm -hmm. Does it seem like it's more complicated? It seems like um, it I asked that question of Tim Simons, who is the Eversource representative I've discussed this with. And I think part of the reason that they've done this is now that they have the new funding source, they may be seeing, now keep in mind that, what do they call it? Is it the smart plan? Yeah. That just, that just came into the, literally just became a player in all of this. So they have to identify certain language. And I think that includes these tariffs, the filed and approved rate tariffs for supplying electric service, they may not have, they may not have had to do that in the past because smart plan hadn't been approved in December when we were discussing it. But this is what I mean about pending council's final legal review. She hasn't yeah. reviewed the legal wrapper. Right. The consolidated agreement is essentially the same. It's the legal wrapper, which is different. And if the board wants to hold off another couple of weeks, we can do that. I just wanted to get it in front of you because we're going to start to want to have to get this infrastructure in place prior to installing the EV charging system. This is at the, I don't know if I just asked this. This is at Larry the lot. Larry lot. Okay. Yes. And we know exactly. And it's according to the plans point. that we had reviewed in the past. And that was last year. If you recall, when we reviewed the plans and started to get into the queue for this, the uh, Green Communities grants were delayed three months. Right. So it put us back to a point where we had to start all over with Eversource. Yeah. And, okay, and Casey, uh, this isn't something Greenfield Savings has to agree to, right? No, this is separate. This is directly for the town and Eversource. Okay. Okay. Prior to then using the money from the Green Communities Grant to install the charger itself. Uh, the Energy Resources Committee asked me for the status update on it. So I checked with Tim Simons and then we looked through the plans again and eventually it comes to you guys for a request for approval. And like I said, if you wanted to hold on to it um, until after I hear from council, I had sent it to her. She had a couple yeah. of meetings today so we weren't able yeah. to discuss it. Well, I'm okay, I guess. I just feel like it's overly complicated now, but you know, what the heck? Well, we can put it off as long we as Lisa, next week if you, you want. Know, why don't we no. do it next week? Just yeah, why don't we do it next? We're meeting on the 13th. 
We're meeting on the yeah. 13th. We are not meeting on the 14th. It's just, just for people to under, uh, know that it's next Tuesday we're meeting. We're meeting with um, the Capital Improvement Committee meeting. And then we also have Treehouse Brewing coming in. So and I also it, want to discuss uh, sewer that night as well. Okay. So, so we have that on the. All right. Um, as long as. Okay. Do, do you want to put this off then until Lisa has a chance to look at it? I sent it to Lisa earlier this week. Yeah, We're talking on Friday. All right. Yeah, why don't we just, Tuesday, why don't just yeah, why don't we just add it to is that all right with you, Dave, to just add it next week? All right. So I, we're gonna have a pretty full agenda for next Tuesday. Um yes. but I I think it, it's mostly good news, except well, the sewer is not good news, but <laughs> sewer is too much money. <laughs> Super so right. much money. All right. Let's just put it off for a week after to, just so I, I would feel better if Lisa reviewed this. It seemed yep. like uh, this has gotten crazy. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is mail. Um, the only thing, or we can talk about the mail or then go down to your administrator's report. I just want to make sure we talk just a few minutes about Oxford Pickle. Um, I, I really was hoping we could get an RFP out. Um, and I've been thinking about this, Casey. Um, we could forego the appraisal and just ask for what we owe on that property. Um, I'm I don't know on. that we can ask for what we owe. We have to use a market value. Um, All right. Well, then, then let's so get So that's the what I mean. Right that's away. why I reviewed the card on that to see I just what need that, that total was. Yeah, I just need that. Um, I mean, well, we need to make a decision about the wastewater first. We have because a, we can't let go of that property unless we have a yes, way we to. Yes, we can. We're good. We're good on that. We can go forward on that for sure. Because we're not going to use that property for a sewer no matter what. No matter what. So So we wouldn't be using that property for any storage of equipment. No, not at all. Unless Kevin has other plans for it other than sewer, but no. No, I think we were just preparing to have to store yep. materials and equipment there. And we won't we won't need that for sure. Not that answer for sure. So okay. And so, I just put a note down to add the wastewater treatment plant. Are you talking about the bids? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna go over that, invite Dave okay. and talk Next about a meeting okay. we had last night and so Casey, um, so can we put this RFP on um, as for discussion item next week then? Yep. Okay, to make sure that we can move forward. But we're just missing an opportunity. And I, I really want to get this. I mean, we've been all anxious about trying to get this going. It's really important that we get some. Among your 45 other items that we have you're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry to interrupt you, Casey. Go right ahead now with your town administrator report and mail. Unless so, we have more comments. Okay. Let me go back just a second. So Barbara sent out the notification from the AG's office about their review of the zoning articles and the general article from last October's special town meeting. And we have to publish, there's, there's requirements. Once we receive their opinion, we have to publish in certain manners. So Barbara confirmed that she's a pub she's published the no the notice of the AG's decision on the floodplain bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, there was an incorrect citation in that in that bylaw change, so the AG actually suggested we make a change to that. So we correct it at the next available time we can. Now it's April, so we may not be able to do that for this upcoming town meeting, but possibly for a fall town meeting, we could do that. We just need to correct that citation. And then that was article six. In article seven, there was a procedural defect in the notice requirement that the AG's office identified. And so we have to place a notice in a newspaper of the zoning change and then wait a 21 day period before, for any questions before we confirm with the AG's office that we've done those things. And it's a compliance question that it happens occasionally when you have a notification defect, which is what it was. It was a notice didn't get posted correctly 
prior to a hearing. So those were the two items and I had, I went back and reviewed them. So I understood what they meant. There was some more information in the AG's opinion that we may have to discuss with council, but effectively pending that article seven, pending the, the 21 day period, Barbara's confirmed that as soon as that 21 day period is over, she's going to be sending our compliance information to the AG so that we can get that ready to go. Yep. And that was the marijuana article. Um, if you look, the so I need two things. I had a conversation with our technical assistance person for our FEMA grant, and he's asked to change from a stipend to a per hour cost. So I discussed that with Brenda and I would need the board to re-vote that approval because essentially we were gonna do a stipend of $2,500 and we've had enough questions go back and forth, not just about the FEMA reimbursement, but his technical assistance for other things could be very valuable. He actually does less, he can give lessons to folks on certain software um, applications that I would like some of my staff to benefit from. So he and I had a conversation and Brenda and I had a conversation and I would like the board to revote the approval to pay him for his technical assistance for at $65 per hour for technical support for the FEMA grant and $25 per hour for technical education for certain software applications like Excel. He actually writes visual basic programming in Excel. So he could be really helpful if we were trying to make adjustments to some of our database programs because he writes those. He, he wrote several for us in Asheville. Um, so if the board would be amenable to that, I would appreciate that. Well, um, does that bring into any other, like how do we pay it out of what thing and do, does that bring in when it's not a stipend and it's an hourly rate? like so part-time what happens is it changes how it, it so it's two things it changes how it's quantified in cares and how it's reimbursed in fema so there's a portion of that that cares act will reimburse us for and so we've also that technical assistance is part and parcel of completing your fema applications so we what we would do is we would actually have to do a payroll sheet for and him. do we have a limit on the amount of money scheduled for for this person versus the 25 right now brenda and i would like to stick to 25 right around 2500 dollars, and then reevaluate after that okay yeah that's my concern it's approximately it's, it's, 40 okay. hours right. we've already voted the 2500 right correct I'm good with that so right. what what we're doing is adjusting it from a how to pay it to an oh. hourly of things so that it could be paid for under CARES Act and FEMA, right? Right. Okay. I, I don't have any problem with that. I'll make a motion. As long, right, as yeah. long as the motion carries a limit of 2,500 bucks until you come to us. Until we have to reevaluate it. Right. And so one thing that everybody should know is we don't know what the final billing is going to look like for FEMA. We don't know how complex it's going to be because they still haven't really answered some of these questions around the change from a 75% reimbursement rate to a 100% reimbursement rate. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, um, I think it's okay because what we're, we're gonna end up with getting more coverage from the 75 right. to the 100%. So right. I, okay. if, if we have to change to hourly, we're still not expending any more money, except that we should get better reimbursement. So I will make the motion to switch from the stipend allocation to the hourly allocation as outlined by uh, town administrator with the limit of $2,500 until we sort out what we actually are gonna get from FEMA <laughs> and the CARES Act. This is so complicated. Um, and, and it well, seems like down. FEMA has, yeah, and it seems like FEMA has really slowed down again. They have, and I think part of that was the evaluation changes between the percentage. So they had to go back and reevaluate a bunch of approved grant requests or um, 
application, not they're sort of somewhere between an application and a request. They had to go back and reevaluate everything. And ours were in the pipeline. And so they haven't, I, I actually finally got an email. They haven't finished evaluating on FEMA's level. MEMA pushed it up to FEMA and FEMA's not completed their evaluation. And, and from what Brian Contreras, who is my contact at MEMA says, it's part of the, the issue is the 75 to hundred percent. They're taking so, a lot more time to review that now. Okay, so we haven't run into any problems yet as far as, I mean, it's still chugging along as far as you know. They have not, the only problems they had were clarification on some of the requests, which we provided. Okay. Okay. And then MEMA finished their review sent it to FEMA. It's been in that pipeline for two months. And it's something that I ask about, I think probably every 14 days, I will send a note yep. out and say, okay, what's happening? Good. Okay. Because thank I want you. the money. <laughs> right. Yes. No. Well, we can't finish our CARES Act without exactly. money when, unless we know what the FEMA is. So um, what I want you to do is just keep it in the tickler. And I think we should reach out to um, McGovern, Jim McGovern's office if we're having more problems, okay, or Elizabeth Warren, because you can't let it just sit there. So if you if you feel like it's not keep chugging, just make sure you let me know and we'll make some phone calls, okay? So we have a motion and a second? Yep. Is there any further discussion? No, all I, right. I, we don't oh. have to run this by the personnel board at all, right? Mm, no, it's a so. temporary no, position. It's, it's, it's so temporary. I think, yeah, I think we I discussed this last time. I, I don't think she float that out there because yep. yeah, no. we get surprised. Oh, good that's a good, good point, Dave. Um, but I think since the, the total dollar amount is so small and it's so temporary, yeah. um, we had discussed this last time and it wasn't subject to the personnel committee, I don't think. Okay. It's part-time temporary. <laughs> Yeah. And it was, and it was really emergency based. Yeah. I mean, yes. everybody was getting so stressed out. Yeah. I mean, there was 50, 60 hour weeks, you know, mm -hmm. just, just trying to keep the meeting. So anyway, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor. I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Wolfram. I Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Casey. Is there anything else you want to talk about? You want to go to the library adult circulation? Yes. So, oh, one quick thing. Um, we did have in the mail list, so two things, the COVID tag sale policy, we had a phone call this morning about tag sales and, or yesterday morning, sorry. And it brought up the question of, do you want to continue to use the safety measures created last year for COVID and so that we can push that information out to the residents? And so the reason you're seeing that as a mail item is we wanted you to look at it and give us some feedback on what you think we should do. Well, we're trying to emphasize that we want people to be safe, okay? And that they have to still be vigilant. So I kind of, I don't have any problem um, have, continuing with tag sales, but right. I think, you know, having a max um, amount of people, I mean, of tag sales, that could be eliminated because you know, we yeah. are, I mean, I don't, so I don't have a problem eliminating a cap. I don't either. Um, okay. um, I, you know, let's continue to waive the $5 fee yep. as long as people call in, you know, to have them, we don't, our town hall isn't open yet. So right. let's just right now continue to waive that. Um, you residents must still call the select board office at least to get a permit number and i i think it makes sense just to keep track of that um yep. okay we have uh, been oh. well, making everybody tag sales pardon me dave i'm well, sorry about tag sales i think maybe we should entertain the having a springtime town wide tax sale we do that in the fall maybe people would be interested in doing that again for the spring yeah i don't know uh how we don't know. normally organize it that's, that's the issue not really, yeah. that's a lot of organization on our part it's actually outside the office where we just facilitate the permits and yeah. the payments 
you might you might reach out to Max and see if he wants to do something for that like that in the spring, Casey. Just just um because that's a good suggestion, Dave. Um I don't think as long as people wear as long as people wear masks and they're socially distanced, I think limiting to 10 people is not necessarily an issue either. Yeah. Um because they're Trevor, do you do you Trevor, do you feel all I agree? I, agree. I okay. think you know you, you can't regulate how many people show up anyways. Nobody's gonna be driving around. We just we we encourage all those safety measures that we're all doing. And I think as long as people follow those, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Yep. So okay. do you want us to change how that reads and say we encourage people to maintain yes. social distancing and mask guidelines? Yes, okay. please. Yes. Please. That would please. be great. Okay. That would be great. And, it, it just, we have, a, there's no question there's persistent virus circulating. So we just have to be smart and vigilant and yep. keep up. Okay. okay. Thank you, Casey. Um, did you, um, when you, when you talked about the library um, adult circulation um, job description, I know do you brought the draft of the social worker or you talked about that we're working on the social worker. Um, job description where they they were open to that um for their next they meeting. would like to see more information and okay. so if we could the question is is they have a meeting and i'll get to this in a second but they have a meeting in a couple of weeks and so our time frame to get them to approve something is relatively short yes okay. so we really need to get our ducks in a row and the problem with that is there's some outlying questions about grant funding and such i know so I know. I'll work with you on that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you brought that up because I had a conflict, so I didn't go. Um, so the library adult circulation job description, the, I had a conversation with Candace and Candace discussed this with the personnel board on Monday. And essentially she has a longtime employee that's retiring. So she would like to take the opportunity to make some adjustments in the job description and the title. The issue is that she can't hire unless the title's in the compensation plan. So they discussed it with this personnel board and they discussed some of the changes in the duties, which were not significant according to what total duties this person does. I think if we reevaluated the position under a different, under a position rating manual, you might see a little bit of a change but Candace doesn't believe that it's a significant change. So personnel was interested in her being able to hire the position as soon as she could. She wanted to get this out right away. And by right away, I mean Friday. So, but the one concern that I had and I had brought it up to them was this. So we're about to get new job descriptions with a different format. And I said to the personnel board, I would like to take Mary Accardi, our consultant's temperature on this because I knew we were going to get new job descriptions. And so I sent Mary an email right after the meeting and she suggested that we stick to the newly created format, which I've seen and showed briefly to the personnel board, but the job descriptions aren't finalized. So when I sent it to her, she said it would be ideal if we changed the format. So I sent it to her. She was going to work on it. My question for the board is, A, would you approve this? And the reason that, that Candace really wants it as soon as possible is she wants a time frame to train this person with the incumbent still there so that they get a good, the new person gets a good flavor of what the job's going to be and get that person up and running so that we're, when the beginning of the fiscal year starts, she's all set. And whoever the employee would be, would be all set with training. So that precipitated a bit of a scramble for Candace and I. Long-term, we may need to address a change in that job description. And so Mary asked me what this would look like in terms of a, a permanent job. And essentially you would change the title to reflect a more modern, a more modern take on libraries. And that was Candace's point is libraries have evolved the personnel board recognizes that circulation isn't the same as adult services. So this is an adult, this says adult circulation. 
well, it's circulation, it's technical assistance, but circulation isn't necessarily paper books anymore. So when Candace reviewed it initially, before she brought it to me, she said, you know, this is really adult services. And so long-term, I think that may be something that Candace wants to see. And so I brought that up to Mary as well, because I think if we could fit it into some of the changes we would be making with the compensation classification plan, it would be easier for this to be implemented after July 1st. But for purposes of, of what Candace needs right now is she's added a couple of items that are preferred, a couple of skills that are preferred and a couple of the particular duties that she needs this person to be able to do. Is this changing the uh, pay of this position? So the change in the pay, and she asked for personnel board's approval on this as well. The change in the pay would be, she requested an increase, she requested a higher rate above step one and the personnel board agreed to a higher rate at step four grade, wait, I can't remember what grade it is. Sorry, give me a second. Right. It's okay. <laughs> I just, I, it's so funny because I had the classification plan open if, before I left the office. So, it is Was this a part-time or time? It's part-time. Okay. Most of the library assistants or aides positions are part-time. And that could shake out differently as if, if there's a change in how the library operates. And that's something that I think Candace is gonna be thinking about in the next year. What, that was what she indicated to us. So this is a, I'm sorry, this is grade two. She would, personnel had approved a higher rate of grade two step four, which is $19.21 per hour according to FY21's classification plan. And okay. Which is what it would start at. Part-time. It's part-time? Part-time. And then what, what's the grade and step currently? The grade is grade two. Yep. I don't know. The person's been working here for 20 years, so I don't yeah. know what her rate yeah. is right here, Higher. but yeah. she's at the top end of, of yeah. whatever that would be. Okay. Um, um, Casey, um, could you send the social worker description to Mary McCarty to yeah. see what, what, if any, what if further? I was going to send her a request. Yeah, just so that I would have, so I can do some more research on anything she might need. Okay. I can talk, I can talk to Annie or um, somebody. I think it would be very useful if Annie could get us some of the information that they discussed with Medford. If Annie could get Medford's information, that would be great for Mary to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I was thinking about while while you guys were talking. Because we'll we'll have to have Mary McCart uh, have her review this. Yes. So on this on the on the library one, do we have anything to review before we would vote on this? Are we voting it next week, or is this? I mean, it's not something we're voting tonight, correct? Or yes, she would like you to vote this tonight. So personnel board she wants approved to it. Post it. Yeah, she wants to. She post wants it. to post it. My request would be is if we could get this, if Mary can finish getting that job description to look like the new format, that would be my request is to do the best we can to get this job description to look like the new format before Candace posts. Yeah, That's just my question. Dinner. She already has this position. Mary has it. Yes. No, but if not Mary. Mary well, she. Candace, does she have this position funded at this position, you know, this amount of money in her budget already submitted? For next year? Yeah. She has the, she has this submitted. She has the circulation head, the head of circula adult circulation in her budget. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she. At this rate, I think that's what. Trevor I don't know that she's got it at this rate. It may actually be higher. I see. Because I don't know that she was anticipating, my impression was she wasn't anticipating the retirement at the time she finalized her budget. 
And then so she has enough. Personnel asked if she had the money though, covered. and she said yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. It um, feels weird not. It oh, feels weird not having that position happened. in front of me to to vote it. That's what I just realized. What happened? I didn't see it. Um, yeah, I just realized what happened was we put the wrong job description in there. Yeah. For the packet. Um, <laughs> no, it was good. No, it was good. The social for... workers in there, but not the library. Right. The library I wanted, one isn't I wanted, in there. I wanted Dave and Trevor to have the social worker um, job description. So I thought you did that on purpose anyway. No, actually, I did it by accident. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for doing it. Well, the problem is, is I can't have you guys vote something that you can't see. And right. so that's a problem for the library. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? Tell, um, tell, um, we're meeting on Tuesday. Yeah, we're telling we're meeting on Tuesday. So she, instead of posting on this in the end of the week, she'll have to just post on Tuesday. And okay, so give, you, I'll have to put that, that on give, the agenda for next week. Yes, and that will give Mary McCarty time to re respond. You know, I mean, I would feel better about that because I, the worst, okay. I mean, we're trying to get everything standardized. And that's why I wanted to look at the social worker job description and see how we can you know what we need to fix up on that and the benefit is she's gonna poor candace is gonna hit me with a baseball bat but the benefit is, is you get to see the social worker one by accident yes well no i want that needs some tweaking yes no we're still working on it but it is a it is a draft I just make sure trevor and dave you know it's a draft it's not mm -hmm. Yep. final one but we're trying to work on this okay so thank you okay so i'll add that to the the 13th and let candace know yep oh right. one other thing there so we filed so the kelleher drive culvert project is substantially complete i have the paperwork to fill out to finalize that substantial completion but we did have a sediment release. I saw, yes. In and the winter. Now we didn't see it. Uh, we, it was difficult to see with the coffer dam set up, but we walked the property last week with Kevin, the engineer and the contractor. And basically we had to file a sediment release notification to several agencies, including the conservation commission. And Tim, Tim and Kevin had talked about it, which is what precipitated the meeting with Zach Cherniak, our engineer. And so we discussed it. The release appears to be attributed to the shutdown of construction during the winter season and the flooding that occurred through the site. So we've notified the agencies that, are, that need to know this. And once the water levels drop, the town will review the area to define the limits of deposition and assess corrective actions to restore the impacted area. And so we'll update the agencies that we sent this to, DEP, CONCOM, um, Army Corps, once we have more, once this assessment is completed. And I wanted the board to know that we had followed up on that. It's so dry right now. I don't, when, when do they figure that you're gonna have a more of a drop in the water level? Are they right now we summer? can't see it. last week we couldn't see it okay so i so need to talk is... to kevin about when he thinks we can go out and look at it again okay because I'm, I'm just worried that this is going to go on and on and on and you know now i don't think concom's going to let that happen because tim was right. very concerned about it yes mm -hmm. i know i and, and i am too and i especially with well, this... that's not to say i'm not it's just well um, no this we have to be able to see it I know this contractor makes me very nervous and I, so I don't, I want to make sure that we're following up on it relatively yes. soon and it has been really dry. So. Uh, yeah. Not know. now when. Well, Zach and Kevin and I are following up, but I wanted to make sure that I notified you and, and gave you the email so that you could see that we were following up. Okay. Can you just reiterate to Zach that I am kind of concerned. Mm -hmm. and 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 it has been tremendously dry so you're not going to have unless you wait way into the summer 
And I, I really don't want to wait. No, I don't think we're going to wait that long. But they did want to see what the flows look like after, because this we went out. I think it was after, it was after a rainstorm that we went out. Well, it had so, been a while ago then, because it's no. We went out last week, but the water level was still high when we went out there. So because yeah, I asked, well, I asked Zach that river. question. But you're looking down the culvert. All right. So there's well, maybe somebody could check again. Okay. Yeah, this week yeah. could be dry enough. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, what, is, there, is there anything else, Casey? Yes. I am wondering if the board would consider attending the personnel board meeting on the 26th of April. And you don't have to tell me right away. We can talk about it again next week. I just think we're going to have some more information on the salary study. And after yes. the finance committee meeting, I think it would be useful for, especially if we have any other discussion about well, my only concern is that um, the the select board is planning to meet on the twenty sixth with the plan, you know, to go to the planning board meeting in support of Treehouse. Treehouse is 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 meeting on the twenty sixth to the planning board. They're usually at seven, right? And then so, what time is personnel? Personnel six o'clock. Six. Oh, oh, okay. Then it's not a conflict. We can go to both. Yeah. Maybe. All right. I'll see. I'll see if there's. Can you okay. post both, please? Um, and also the 29th is ZBA for the select board as well. The 29th? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the 13th, they're coming to us. Yes. 26th, they're going to the planning board. 29th, they're going to the ZBA. And the select board would like to make, be sure that we have the ability to make comments. Yep. So I just want to, to make sure that you post it so we have the ability to make comments and participate as a, as as official select board and not just personal people. Okay. So the 26th for planning at 7 possibly the 26th at 6 for the personnel board because yep. those are two different accounts. Yep. So they have to be posted separately. Yep. Okay. And then the select board on the 29th for the ZBA hearing about Treehouse. Yes, that okay. would be fine. Okay. Thank you, Casey. Thank You're you. welcome. All right. We also are meeting on the 13th next week, as we already indicated, the 21st, May 5th, May 19th, June 2nd, the 16th and 30th of June, July 14th, the 28th, and August 11th and 25th. Plus, any additional meetings every today. other night in between <laughs> yeah i know that's what it seems like lately oh my god i think get red eye from watching the computer screen i'm just exhausted headaches yeah. I, know. Yeah. I know okay so is there anything else public comment i think was public, oh public comment yes i'm sorry no it's okay all right um hearing nothing i will take a, a motion to adjourn and thank everyone for a wonderful hanging in there all day <laughs> uh, no if i hear no public comment uh, motion to adjourn david wolfram second all right before we have further discussion all those in favor <laughs> hi trevor mcdaniel thank you hi, have david a great wolfram. night hi, Beth. Beth. thank you everybody thank you so much everyone for showing up